Hello and welcome. Uh, with this problem, uh, we're dealing with the ISLM model. So given equations describing consumption, investment, and money man, and given um, values for government purchases, taxes, and the money supply, as well as the price level, we're going to calculate the IS curve and build the LM curve, and then we'll find equilibrium output, um, so equilibrium you know, income or Y star, and then we're going to find the equilibrium interest rate, R star. Uh, and then uh, we're also going to deal with a bunch of shocks uh, and we're then going to use these two curves to build the aggregate demand curve in the end. So um, since we're covering so much material, this video is probably going to only get up to part C of this question. Uh, and then in other videos, uh, we'll get to the rest and I'll link to those in the video description if you want to skip ahead. All right, so uh, besides this being an exercise, why are we doing this? Well, one way uh, ISLM is useful is that it ties together two parts of an economy we think are important. So first is the IS curve, which describes like the trade-off between consumption of goods and services and the desire to save and invest. And this is linked to the LM curve, which reflects um, all combinations of the interest rate and income levels that equilibrates the market for real money balances. So the LM curve is kind of basically um, the supply and demand for real money balances in the economy. So these two curves, the IS and the LM curves, come together to determine an equilibrium R, real interest rate, and an equilibrium Y, output or income, in the economy. Uh, since in an actual economy, we will want to change Y, outcome or income, we might want to change other economic variables. A model that helps us understand how R and Y are determined can be quite useful. So now in this problem, uh, we added in uh, fiscal shocks. Um, so I'll probably won't be able to finish that in this video, so I'll link to those uh, things in the video description. So when we say a fiscal shock, uh, we're talking about uh, changes in government spending or taxes, and uh, we'll have uh, monetary shocks. So that is to say a central bank changing the money supply. So part of the goal of any course in intermediate macroeconomics is to get you to understand how uh, the macroeconomy works. And in particular, we'd like to understand how the macroeconomy works in the context of what we, and by we, we might mean a fiscal authority like Congress or government in general, uh, uh, and a monetary authority like a central bank. So in the context of what we as a people might do to influence the parts of the economy we care about. So that's what this question is getting at in a relatively simple framework, the ISLM model. Um, so the ISLM model is you know, relatively simple uh, relative to how complicated the overall economy is. OK, so let's get to the problem. So part A says, uh, consider the economy of Hicksonia. Um, we have a consumption function here. So consumption is equal to some baseline consumption of 200 plus um, some function of disposable income. So this is income, this is taxes. The difference between income and taxes is your disposable income. And here's going to be our marginal propensity to consume. So how our consumption changes given a change in disposable income. Here's our investment function. So investment is a function of some baseline uh, level of investment. And then it's negatively related to the real interest rate or to the interest rate. Government purchases is 100. Um, and part A asks us to graph the IS curve uh, for R changing from 0 to 8, so kind of graph the uh, IS curve for a little bit of range. So what's the IS curve? The IS curve is basically this accounting identity of GDP right here. So this is the, the market for goods and services. You have a certain amount of income, you know, that's the money you have to spend. And then over here you have the market for goods and services. These are the things that you could use your income to spend on consumption, investment, and then government purchases. So uh, the next step is we just plug in the values that we've been, uh, the equations we've been given for each of these. So for consumption, we have uh, 200 plus the marginal propensity to consume times the disposable income, this term here. Uh, investment, we plug that equation in, and then we're told government spending, government purchases is 800. Uh, also taxes, sorry, I said 800. Uh, government purchases and taxes are both 100. So plugging all that in, um, taxes 100, government purchases 100. We get simplified down to this. So y is equal to um, 3 fourths y plus 425 minus 25r. Just a little bit of arithmetic. Solving for y, uh, we get the following. Solving for y, we get the is curve, which is y is equal to 1700 minus 100r. Um, so once again, how do we find this? We started off with um, an equation that describes the market for goods and services. So the demand for goods and services is going to be equal to income. Plug in our uh, equations and then solve so that it's y is equal to something in terms of the interest rate. And so here's our IS curve. 
Now, drawing the answer IS curve, um, when we draw our IS curve, we have on the vertical axis the real interest rate, the interest rate, and then on the horizontal axis we have Y, uh, which is you know income or output. Um, so how do we draw it? Well, notice if the interest rate is set to zero, that means this whole term goes to zero, and we're left with output equal to 1700. So at the right along the the x-axis, we have a value on the IS curve of 1700. And then uh, with this sign here, notice that it's a negative sign, um, so we're going to have a downward sloping IS curve. Um, moving to part B, um, which is we're going to be building the LM curve. Uh, we're given money demand uh, is given by this term here. So uh, money demand divided by prices, so overall money demand, real money demand, is going to be equal to uh, output or income for this economy minus 100 times R. Uh, and then the nominal money supply is equal to 1,000, and then the price level is equal to 2. So for this economy, we're going to draw the LM curve ranging from 0 to 8 again. So how do we convert this information into the LM curve? Well, well the LM curve tells us all combinations of interest rates and income such that the market for real money balances is in equilibrium. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the supply of real money balances equal to the demand for real money balances. Um, so how do we do that? Well, um, first off, what's money demand? What's the demand for real money balances? Well, we've been given that equation. That's just equal to um, real output minus 100 times R. So this might make intuitive sense. First off, if um, income's high, we would expect money demand to be high. You know, the, the more income you have, the more likely you are to want to, to have some income in order to participate in the economy. And then intuitively, why might the interest rate be negatively related to the, the demand for real money balances? Well, R represents the opportunity cost of holding money. So if R is rather high, that tells you that the opportunity cost of holding money is rather high. You know, you could put it into a bank account, um, you could give it to a bank, you could lend it out somehow and earn higher interest. And so your demand for real money balances would be lower if that um, opportunity cost for holding money is higher. And then similarly, if uh, interest rates are super, super low, you know, imagine if the difference between holding cash and putting that cash into a bank, you know, is, is basically very low to you. Like you're not going to earn much money in the bank. You're going to earn about as much as holding it in cash. Well, then you're more likely to hold higher money, real money balances because, you know, having it in money form is more useful to you than having it locked up in a bank account. So that's kind of the basic intuition um, of the money demand equation from the theory of liquidity preferences. Over here we have the money supply. So the money supply is just m over p. Um, and notationally we have it raised to the s, but that's not an exponent. There's no exponent value of s that we're going to plug in. It's just m over p. So the money supply we were told here is equal to 1,000. The price level we're told here is equal to 2. So the, money, the real money supply is equal to 500. So we're going to set these two equations equal to each other. So we have y is equal to, sorry, y minus 100r is equal to 500. So uh, money demand is equal to money supply. Simplifying things slightly, uh, we have the LM curve, which we have y is equal to um, 500 plus 100r. So here's our LM curve. Uh, and then graphing our LM curve, we have this below. So um, what happens if uh, the interest rate is zero? So if the interest rate is zero, this term goes to zero, and we have output is equal to 500. So that's this point right here. If the real interest rate on the vertical axis is equal to zero, we're going to have y equal to 500, and then draw it here. Um, so here is our IS curve and our LM curve. Next, we need to find the equilibrium interest rate R and the equilibrium level of income or I'll put Y. So equilibrium R star and Y star, we usually have these stars to designate uh, equilibrium or steady state values. So these values are such that the IS curve equals the LM curve. So if we were to look back at the graph, that would be where they intersect each other. It's going to be this point right here. So uh, how do we find that given that we have actual equations for the IS curve and the LM curve? So here's the IS curve we found. Here's the LM curve we found. Um, so how do we find our equilibrium values? Well, to get started, uh, let's find equilibrium real interest rate. So to find the equilibrium interest rate R star, we're going to set these two curves equal to each other. So you notice the I, IS curve is 
y is equal to all this term here. And notice that the LM curve is y is equal to all of this here. So we could set this part of the IS curve equal to this part of the LM curve and then just solve for r. So doing that, um, we have 17 minus 100r is equal to um, this portion of the LM curve, 500 plus 100r. Doing a little bit of uh, arithmetic, um, we find that r star is equal to 6. So our equilibrium interest rate is 6. So now how do we find y star? Well, um, we could plug this 6 back into either the IS curve or the LM curve. doesn't matter which, because uh, assuming we've done this step correctly, assuming we've done the step to find equilibrium interest rate R star correct, uh, then uh, we'll get the same answer no matter which curve we plug R star back into. So that's what I've done here. So finding the equilibrium level of Y star, we need to plug R star back into either our LM or IS equations. So here's the work for the IS curve. Um, and then here's here's the uh, work for the LM curve. And you'll notice that uh, in both cases, you get the same equilibrium level of Y star, kind of by definition. Okay, so in this economy described by those simple equations, we have the equilibrium real interest rate equal to six, and we have the equilibrium um, Y, you know, GDP output or income is equal to 1100. Uh, so lastly, just kind of drawing these together, um, we have our IS curve that we drew, we have our LM curve that we drew, and then they intersect at this point where R star is equal to 6, and equilibrium output is equal to 1100. And then now that we're running a little long, uh, check out the video description to link to the next parts of the problem. The next parts of the problem that we're going to deal with, uh, uh, we have a... I think there's a fiscal shock, so we change government spending. We'll have a monetary shock. We get change government spending. I think we then shock prices. And then the last part is we tie IS and LM together to build the aggregate demand curve. So check out that. Uh, let's see. Thanks and have a good day. If you found this video helpful, if you wouldn't mind clicking the like button. Awesome.